So as people of God, one of the things that the Lord Jesus wants us to enter into with him is a real personal, intimate uh, relationship with him. Um, and that takes a surrendering of ourselves. That takes a, a giving of our heart, a surrendering of our mind. That takes us uh, opening up our soul, all the dimensions of man. He, he needs to enter into, he needs to have access to all of those areas so that he can truly um, work and truly be in man's life the way that he desires to. So by the grace of Almighty God today, uh, tonight, whenever you find this video, um, we're going to uh, just delve into some places in the word of God that are going to help us understand the relationship that Jesus is wishing to come into with all of those that have believed on him, confessed him, been baptized into him, and are striving to live their lives um, daily, seeking him, following him, obeying his voice. So we're going to start, uh, there's a verse in Proverbs chapter 20, and by the grace of God, we're going to build on, on this verse because I believe it's important for us to know as we, we grow in our love and we grow in our faithfulness and our commitment to God. And the verse says, counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters. But then it, and then it says, a man of understanding will draw it out. So what we see here is God is communicating the necessity and the importance of the fact that um, we come to, although we may be unknowing of this, and depending on the calling of your life or um, just how your environment was as you were raised, as you were coming up, um, God is communicating to you in different ways. God is making himself available to you. He is uh, showing himself through your life and you may not be seeing it and there's things that are happening to your heart your heart is being conditioned to to accept him so when he truly uh, by his grace when the father be truly when the father begins to draw you to Jesus um, your heart is prepared your heart is is able to receive Jesus so that you can truly enter into that relationship and you can grow in your love and your appetite for his holiness and his righteousness. Um, but counsel has to come from an outside source. Counsel is not something that you can do for yourself. Counsel is something that has to come from another source. Now, we have examples in the Word of God where we see this happen with where a certain individual would interact with God where it was just that individual and God. Noah, for instance, when he builds the ark and it's time for him to go into the ark, God is in the ark and God says, come into the ark. God invites him in. That's a circumstance where God may invite you. Um, and God had been speaking to Noah all this time. So God was, was working on his mind. Preparing his mind for that big decision, preparing his mind for the life changing move of faith that he was going to have to make by actually building that ark and remaining in there until God told him to come out and uh, go on with life from that point. So we have that instance. But then we have an instance where we have like Samuel the prophet, where his mother devotes him to God. His mother, Hannah, desires a child. She desires to have a child with her husband, Elkanah. And she tells God that if you give me, if you give me a child, I will give that child back to you. I will devote that child for you. 
Samuel is, she has a son, names him Samuel, and she devotes him to God. So because she devotes him to God, she leaves him at the temple to be trained, to learn how to be a man of God by the, the, the head priest at this time, Eli. There reaches a point where Eli is beginning to be old. God begins to communicate. He begins to call for Samuel. He's beginning to, uh, he's beginning to show himself. He's beginning by his voice. He's beginning to invite Samuel into this relationship with him. Samuel is unsure what's going on. He believes it's his highest authority, which is Eli, because the word of God says that at this point, Samuel did not know God and he did not know the word of God. So he was not aware of how to approach God, how to engage God. So he had to go to Eli being his godly example on earth. He thinks Eli's calling him. Eli tells him, no, I did not call you. He comes back to him again. Eli has to tell Samuel that God is calling you. God wants to speak to you. So what you need to say when he, the next time he calls on you, you need to say, Lord, your servant, here I am. I am your servant and your servant heareth. So Eli had to unlock what was being built up in Samuel's heart, which was all of that godly counsel, all of that good counsel. He was being prepared to enter into his next phase of a relationship with God was going to become basically the most powerful man on the planet. Once Eli unlocked that, that, that access, Eli was Samuel's key to entering into a deeper relationship with God. So because he stayed in the temple, he was closely walking with Eli. Eli was Eli was his access point to God. That's an example of a counsel. Counsel being deep in the heart of a man, but a man of understanding draweth out. Eli was the man of understanding because he knew how to access God. Although Samuel was a Levi, Samuel, Samuel was a Levi, meaning that his parents came from the, the lineage that God had chosen to specifically focus on the priestly duties, focus on the temple duties. He came from that line. He still had not yet seen God or, or really had a real experience with God. So he needed Eli to, uh, to show him that. And many of you are probably at this phase in your walk where God is, it's becoming apparent that God is doing things in your life. He's doing things around you. He's doing things in you. And you need to be fully aware of what's going on in you. You need to be fully aware of what God is wanting to bring out of you, what God is stirring up and he's ready to bring it out of you because you're getting full. You're getting full of it and God is wanting it to, the spirit of God is wanting it to manifest and display itself outwardly in your life. And you need counsel. You need someone that understands God, understands uh, their role with God. They understand the role that they play with God and they understand that they the role that they play to man so they know how to they know how to serve you in a way to where ultimately you are pleasing to God by what they speak into your life speak over your life it is so important and this is why the church is a very important thing that every Christian, every believer, every follower of Jesus, you have to submit yourself to the church because people, people are people are in the church that are that need to unlock things that you don't have the keys to. You don't have the ability to 
look within yourself to see what's in there to bring it out. And this can be good and bad things. This could be good and bad things. Sometimes the, the counsel uh, that's in the heart of you, that the, that's, that's deep in you like deep waters, sometimes those are seeds of, of anger, of wrath, of resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, jealousy, envy, uh, just deep-seated hurt and pain, rejection. Sometimes those are the things that are, are just flowing in you, flowing through you like deep water. And, and that man of understanding needs to bring that out so that the righteousness of God can rest on your heart. So that as the truth of God is being made available to you, as the truth of God is beginning to speak to your mind and occupy your heart, your heart and your mind are in sync with where God is taking you and what God is wishing to see in your life <clears throat> at your phase that you are at. Um, I'm also reminded of another man um, in Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip the Evangelist. He has two, he has two occurrences um, where it first talks about Saul. This is uh, Paul the Apostle before he actually became the Apostle. God was, at this point, the Acts chapter 8 is talking about how he's causing havoc in the churches. And um, all of the, the, the Christians, all of the people of God at this point had to separate and spread throughout Judea and Samaria, except the disciples. And um, Samuel goes into Samaria. He starts preaching. He's doing the miraculous things of God. He's healing people. He's, he's, um, he's doing all the miraculous things that it talks about in Mark chapter 6. The signs of these will follow. He's, he's doing all of these, these supernatural miraculous things. And the people, it even says in the word of God that the people were full of joy. They're happy because they're seeing God work in a way that they had never seen before. They are just happy that Jesus is being made available to them. He meets a man named Simon the Sorcerer. And, uh, Simon, it said that Simon had control over this area and he was bewitching the people. So they were under his, kind of under his way of, 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 of doing things. Um, so Simon ends up, as, as the people begin to, uh, they, 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 they are baptized in Jesus. Philip preaches the kingdom to them. He preaches Jesus to them. They get baptized. Simon also gets baptized. Now, Simon gets baptized, but as he's continuing to see Philip operate in the miraculous, Simon begins to covet that. He begins to covet that, and he begins, he, he, tells Philip that he wants to buy that. He wants to actually, with money, purchase that gift so that he could do the things that Philip was doing. <clears throat> but the Lord knew what he needed to do. So Peter, Peter and John hear that the people in Samaria are getting baptized. They know that they're going to need the Holy Ghost because they know that they are still spiritually under Simon's Control. They're still under all. They're still going to experience the effects of all of this this bewitching that Simon had been doing to them for however long he had been doing it. So Peter, being the man that he is at this time, he goes. He, they go there, and they impart the Holy Ghost to the people. Peter has to confront Simon. He confronts Simon, and he tells them, "Like you are." Under you are you are being controlled by, I believe it says he was being controlled by the the gall of of uh, the gall of bitterness. Um, let's go there. Um, yeah, so it says that that Simon he tells him he tells him to repent of his wickedness and repent. 
uh, he says that I perceive, I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He confronts the condition of his heart. He confronts the condition of his heart. He's trying to draw out what's in his heart. Peter being a man that walked with Jesus, that had been taught the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeing Jesus in the flesh. He has been equipped by God to confront matters like this. He confronts it. He speaks to this man's heart and he tells him what he's walking in. And then Simon, realizing that he's been confronted, he says, he says to, to Peter, he says, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me because Peter basically uh, tells him, he said, your money will perish with you because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. That's why we need people of understanding because in our zeal, in our passion to please God, sometimes that can be misguided. Sometimes our motives are not pure when we want to do the work of the God. Just like Nicodemus approaching Jesus at night, asking him questions about the kingdom. He didn't really want Jesus. He didn't really believe Jesus for who he really was. He just wanted to have some questions answered. He just wanted some mental stimulation because he was hearing about the person of Jesus and he wanted to just know for himself certain things. He did not go there because he really wanted Jesus. Now, later on, we see Nicodemus in a different way. But in that particular, in John chapter three, we see Nicodemus approaching God the wrong way. He approached Jesus the wrong way. And that's what we have here. This man needed his heart to be spoken to because there were things in there that were going to defile the work of God. It was going to tarnish and taint the name of God. Had this man in his condition received the power to operate in the miraculous. So um, these are important things for us to go over because we want to make sure that our hearts are pure. We want to make sure that our hearts are pure as we serve God. And we need to acknowledge the fact that many of us don't really want to know what's in our hearts. But many of us don't want to know what's in our hearts because we've gotten accustomed to adjusting to life, just adjusting to things. We've gotten conditioned to thinking that we are okay, especially when we are people who see God doing great things in our lives and we are aware that we've gotten to a level of an awareness where we feel that our relationship with God is solid enough so that there's certain things that we're not ignoring intentionally, but we're not really confronting the real issues that are going on in our heart. And that's where the counsel comes in. That's where the outside help needs to come in. That's where we need leaders. We need godly leadership. You need godly leadership because the enemy does try to convince us that everything is okay. And many of us have, begun, have gotten very skillful at maneuvering through life, although there are real issues, although there is real pain, although there is real parts of us that we have not surrendered to Jesus. Many of us have the power and many of us are experiencing the presence but we are severely lacking in the personality of Jesus. That's where you see the lacking. That's where you see that there's still we're still all left wanting is the personality of Jesus. That's what that's what is was preventing a lot of us from really seeing God manifest through what we do where we really see Jesus manifesting through our handling of people, our handling of our responsibilities, our handling of our resources, our ability to really 
confront the sin in our lives. Many of us stay away from the council because we've gotten comfortable. We've gotten comfortable with the state that we're in. When you're, especially if you're in a healthy church where the Spirit of God is falling, the Spirit of God is, is present and it's active in such a mighty way, it's very easy to ignore and overlook. We're not going to say small things, but things that may not be visible, things that may not be noticeable to those that we are laboring amongst. So, we will see a true blessing. We will really see the blessings of God, the promises of God. We'll really see ourselves in the church elevate when we begin to respect the counsel of the Lord, respect the counselors of the Lord, those that are in place to serve God and to serve us. We please God when we obey them, we, when, we, when we listen to them, when we take their counsel in and we let it marinate and we actually apply what is being said to us, when we apply what's being ministered to our hearts, we're not just storing it in our minds so we can recall it when we need to have conversations with people, but no. We need to be becoming what we are reading. We should be becoming this. This is not just something that we read and occasionally take tests on. This is some, This is your life. If you are a Christian, this is your life. These are your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And this is how you become like Jesus. And there are people in your life that need to tell you what this is, there are people who are living this out and they have been doing it longer than you. And God speaks to them in ways that 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 that, that he doesn't speak to you. And failure to submit yourself to those people, failure to let those people truly be what they need to be to you. You're going to stunt your growth. You're going to limit yourself in what God can do in your life. God has to withhold certain things. He can't talk to you the way he wants to because you don't operate. You don't respect the protocol. You don't respect the, the chain of command. You don't respect the flow of power. You need to re respect the flow of power. We all just want to approach God and just get all the power for, our, for ourselves. And we all just want to, you know have this personal relationship with Jesus that's so personal that no one can come in and uh, advise us or redirect us or uh, just just be that 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 extra set of eyes or or uh, be the true influence and representative that um, they need to be. We need to understand that. We need to understand that people are in our lives to draw the things out of us that God has placed in us. And that's good and bad. And we need to respect that and we need to appreciate that so that we can grow and we can be true Christians. Because we want to we want to be true Christians. We want to be true Christians. And if we are pretending and if we are being hypocrites, it's only a matter of time before that's going to be placed, that's going to be on display. It's just a matter of time before that's going to be brought to the surface. And God is trusting God when you, as you grow, as, as you grow as a son of God, God will begin to show you things. He's trusting that you're going to deal with it. He's trusting that you can handle it. You can deal with it. You can come to him about it. So that he can give you grace to confront it and deal with it. But if we ignore things because we're still getting access, because we're still seeing 
the spirit of God work in such a great way. If we, if we continue to, to function in that way, um, we're going to be put in position to where what's in our heart is going to come out. And it could be in a way or in a circumstance that we don't want it to happen. We want to be, we want to be where we need to be in our walk with God. And we got to walk in the spirit. We got to trust the spirit of God as it sanctifies us, as it transforms us, as it allows us to experience more of the, of the, the peace of God and the joy of God. We need to trust what God is doing. We need to trust the people of God as they are being led by God to be, to position us to be to be the people of God that we need to be. So that's today's word is respect the order of God, respect the counsel of God as it as it comes to you. Just respect that. Open yourself up to that. Let it bless you, let it heal you, let it deliver you, let it transform you. Let the men of understanding draw out what's in your heart. Good, bad, or indifferent, submit yourself to it and watch God bless you and elevate you and prosper you as you strive to serve him and love him and obey him in your daily life.